This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon and uh, we're going to continue on with my man crush of Keanu Reeves and uh, the things he says. Um, I feel like it should be like a like a sweet, sweet song that I shall not make up and sing on the spot right now. But I am going to share more of his quotes. Um, I shared one yesterday and pulled it apart with some of my own thoughts and input. And uh, we'll do the same thing today with one that... Um, I think I think it's quite powerful. He uh, the quote itself says, "Grief changes shape, but it never ends." I, I'm actually interested. To, I wish I could speak to Keanu around this one and going, "Well, you know, wh- wh- what does he mean by changes shape?" Um, I, I think it's quite powerful or impactful. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, beauty in that. However, what does he actually mean is is sort of pretty interesting, I suppose, because. The, the the thing that's alluding, that I believe he's alluding to in this, grief changes shape, but it never ends, means that, and this goes into a whole heap of conversations around how life is suffering, right? And it's not a matter of it being negative. It's just that we, we must suffer in order to understand what the positives that life has to offer. We, we cannot, you know... Um, just taking all the positives, we we need we need contrast, so we have to understand, and that's what the best life lessons are. But the other thing this is also alluding to is to find peace within pain, right? To find our peace within pain, that grief will always be around us in some way or another. Maybe it's in our memories of somebody, maybe it is in memories of a relationship, maybe it is to the good old days. And I thoroughly believe that we're currently living the good old days. But either way, grief itself is something that we really have to learn to to coexist with and and to not shame. Hey, it's the same like I often I'll have conversations with people and I'm like, Are you do you often reject negative emotions? Like, yeah, they they would just go, Yeah, I'm not allowed to feel it. Like I I I I don't know, I just I'm just not allowed to feel it. Which is really quite interesting, hey, because once again, it's it's alluding and pointing to something for that person where it's just like I'm I'm not actually allowed for whatever reason in my meaning structures, in the subjective space in my mind, I'm not allowed to feel negative. I'm meant to be the positive one, which is super negative, right? Because that's being negative towards negativity. It's it's actually, and then from there, they end up shaming their shame, and that that becomes a whole shadow of a personality. And then it, it forces them to continually be in the positive one, continually be in the fucking happy one all the fucking time until they just blow up because they're rejecting part, if not half, of who they are and who they're not. But that's another conversation. And so the, the beauty here really is being able to sit with the pain, sit with the grief. And more often than not, when I've spoken to people and they go, well, that's just what it is. And I'm like, well... If you're upset about it and you don't want to change it, then the offer would be, are you, are, are, do you give yourself permission to be okay, to sit in the pain, to sit in the suffering, right? Because all emotion is resourceful. All emotion is useful from grief to sadness to, to anger. All of it's pointing to some sort of information and information within our own meaning structures, and so people go, but grief is universal. It's like, but maybe we're not about the same thing. Right, when somebody passes away, uh, and I'm going to give an extreme example of, you know, in, in a war torn war torn country, then some people are grieving for their leader that's passed, where the other people are celebrating. It's, it's, it's all in the meaning structures of the individual. It's all what's important to them, whether they realize it or not. But either way, the grief will always be with us. It changes shape. Maybe it's red and and really really you know sharp and and everything and it's in our face or maybe it's blue and in our chest right maybe it's in the past maybe it's here with us now Now, i remember hearing an analogy many many moons ago about um 
somebody was struggling. They reached out on a social media platform asking for some sort of help because they had, I think their father passed away and then somebody somebody contributed a story and they, I believe it was based around his father passing away and he was an older guy. I don't know what age. I'd just be saying a number for the sake of it. So he was an older guy and uh, had lived some life and he went on to say that, that grief is kind of like the ocean and when you lose someone to begin with, and it just feels like there's you're in the ocean, there's just a fucking storm, and you're just getting hit by wave after wave, and they're just m- humongous storms, right? And these humongous waves are just coming and hitting and smashing you, and you you like feel like you're drowning and you can't breathe, and it's just like it's just it's just almost silence around you, even though there's just so much like almost rage within these waves, right? And over time, the the storm sort of subsides a little bit and the waves get a little bit less erratic but they might still be there but you've just got a few more moments in between to be able to breathe to be able to get your head above the water right but then another wave hits you and you're under and you can't breathe again but it's not as long this time and then later on as you the storm starts to pass the waves become more flowing and a bit more calm and every now and again there's a still a wave that comes up and it it it, it hits you and you, you might go under. Maybe you duck dive. Maybe you see it coming. And you actually go into the wave. You go into the emotion. And you come out the other side rather than trying to resist it. And then over time, the waves start to die down. And you can feel it, but your head's above the water. You're not getting drowned with it by, by, by it anymore. You're not suffocating. You're not gasping for air and, and feeling helpless. You're floating. But it doesn't take the waves away. They're always there until the next storm. And I think that's really what this is pointing to. It, it changes shape, but it never ends. The ocean never ends. Waves never end. Even after we are gone in our physical form, existence never ends. And when it does, it'll start again. So the beautiful thing in all of this is really understanding that when we can learn the cycle of life and learn all the meaning structures for ourselves and truly understand ourselves, we can see that grief is a part of living as hard as it is, as heart-wrenching as it is. It gives birth to so much. And so this is why it's so useful for us to actually use our life, our one life, as something so powerful, right? Something so so intergenerational, something something of meaning, something of worth to contribute. And that's my biggest offer for you. And on that note, Tim, I'm done. If you found this podcast beneficial, it would mean the world to me. If you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. If you haven't already, Facebook community, jump on and find the Mood Prep community on Facebook, and I'd love to see you in there. But otherwise, Tim, I'm out until tomorrow. Peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. Unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned.